Hello and welcome to this short video brought to you by tutor to you. This video is going to be looking at the AQA A-Level Specification for Psychology and in particular we are going to be recapping research methods and control of variables. Let's begin with thinking about what an extraneous variable is. So an extraneous variable or an EV is a general term for any variable other than the IV that might affect the results or the change within the dependent variable. Where possible, these variables should be identified by the researcher at the start of the study, and the researcher should take steps to minimise their influence. Examples of extraneous variables might be the lighting in the lab, background noise, or differences between difficulties of a test across conditions. Now, confounding variables are very, very similar to extraneous variables, and it's very common that people get these mixed up. Just remember, an extraneous variable is something that the researcher is trying to identify before the start of the study, and then they will try to control for them. A confounding variable is a variable other than the IV, which does have an unwanted effect on the dependent variable in an experiment. Results become biased, as it cannot be determined whether results are caused by the IV or by the confounding variable. So whereas an extraneous variable is identified at the start of the study before it has taken place and a researcher tries to control for it, a confounding variable is a variable other than the IV which does have an impact on the dependent variable, it has had an impact within the study. Now let's take a look at demand characteristics. Demand characteristics seems to be a concept that a lot of people like to throw in their exam responses or within their essays. However, they're not fully confident in what it means, or they just talk about one side of demand characteristics, which we're going to take a look at now. So presence of demand characteristics in a study suggests that there is a high risk that the participants will change their natural behaviour in line with their interpretation of the aims of a study in turn affecting how they respond in any tasks they are set. So participants may, for example, try to please the researcher by doing what they have guessed is expected of them, and this is sometimes called the please you effect. However, the side which a lot of people tend to miss out is the alternative. Participants might deliberately try to skew the results in one way or another, such as attempting to do the opposite of what they think is expected. And rather than the please you effect, this is known as the screw you effect. So it's really important if you get an exam question on demand characteristics that you don't just consider the please you effect, the idea that the participant works out the aim and they try to meet the aim that the researcher is looking for. It can also work in the opposite way. You have to be able to touch on that. The fact that the participant might work out the aim, but then behave in a way that doesn't meet the aims that the researcher is after, that purposely throws off the study. Another concept which is good to talk about, particularly on things like interviews or questionnaires or observations, is social desirability bias. Social desirability bias in participants' behaviour occurs when the participant notes aspects of the study that have to do with particular social norms or expectations, and then in turn present themselves in what they deem a socially acceptable fashion. For example, when asked if they've ever stolen anything, Participants might lie in order to avoid presenting themselves in a bad light, consequently leading to gathering inaccurate data. So social desirability bias is the idea of trying to fit with social norms. The participant wants to look better, so they might not give honest answers at fear that they will be reprimanded. Investigator effects occur when a researcher unintentionally or unconsciously influences the outcomes of any research they are conducting. This can be done in multiple different ways. The first way we're going to talk about here is non-verbal communication. The researcher can communicate their feelings about what they're observing without realising that they have done so. For example, a raised eyebrow can make the participants aware they may have said or done something which has surprised or shocked the researcher, and they may alter their response as a consequence of this, affecting the validity of the data. The second one is physical characteristics. The appearance of the researcher and such physical characteristics, such as their gender, will influence the behavioural response of the participants. This means that the behaviour is a product of the situation because of the researcher and therefore might not be reliable or valid. The final one is bias in interpretation of data. 
A researcher can affect the results reported from a piece of research by interpreting the data in a biased way. They may not realise that they are interpreting it in a different way to someone else's because it feels as if their view is the correct one. The extent to which this can occur is dependent on the data collected. This would not occur if the dependent variable is something like reaction time, as this is an objective method of measurement. So how can we try to control extraneous or confounding variables? One way of doing it is randomization. So randomization is used to minimize the effect of extraneous or confounding variables on the outcome in the presentation of trials in an experiment to avoid any systematic errors that might occur as a result of the order in which the trials took place. An example of randomization would be asking participants to take part in a variety of different conditions within different orders. What's really important to note here is that you need to be cautious with your language in the exam. You can never turn around and say, get rid of extraneous variables or get rid of confounding variables, as they always might be something which gets in the way within your experiment that you just can't control for. So the better wording would be to say, minimise the effect of these variables through something such as randomization. Another way to try to minimise the effects of extraneous or confounding variables is standardisation. Now, again, you'll see there the way I'm not saying get rid of extraneous variables. We say minimise the effects of them. So standardisation refers to the process in which procedures used in research are kept the same. Great attention is taken to keep all elements of a procedure identical, such as providing all participants with standardised instructions. Standardised just means the same. Under these circumstances, changes in data can be attributed to the IB because we could hope that there was nothing else getting in the way. All the participants were given the same instructions, they were given the same amount of time, they took part in the experiment in the same room, uh, the lighting was kept the same. All of these things are known as standardisation. In addition, it's far more likely that the results will be successfully replicated on subsequent occasions. So think back to the key features of science. Replicability is one of your key features of science. So if we can standardise our procedure, then we are making things more scientific.